Welcome to the world of Michael Bruce Ross, where the ordinary masks the extraordinary. Michael Bruce Ross, infamously known as the Roadside Strangler, was a chilling serial killer who terrorized Connecticut in the 1980s. His gruesome crimes sent shockwaves through the state and left a lasting scar on the community. The story begins in 1983 when Michael Ross was a seemingly unremarkable man in his early 20s. He had a decent job, a clean criminal record, and no one suspected the darkness that lurked within him. But beneath this facade of normalcy, he harbored a twisted compulsion that would soon escalate into a killing spree. Ross's first known victim was Robin Stavinsky, a 19-year-old college student. On May 12, 1983, she was hitchhiking along Route 8 in Connecticut when Ross offered her a ride. Trusting his unassuming appearance, she accepted. Little did she know that this would be the last ride of her life. Ross took Robin to a secluded spot where he overpowered her. What followed was a nightmarish ordeal of rape and violence. When he was done, Ross strangled her to death and left her lifeless body discarded in the woods. It was a horrific and senseless act that would set the tone for the gruesome crimes that followed. Over the next few years, Ross continued to pick up young women, most of them hitchhikers or prostitutes, in the New England area. His modus operandi remained consistent. He would lure them into his vehicle, assault them, strangle them, and then abandon their lifeless bodies in remote locations. He often targeted vulnerable women who had fallen through society's safety nets, making them easy prey. As the body count rose, fear and paranoia gripped Connecticut. Women were warned against hitchhiking or accepting rides from strangers, and the police worked tirelessly to catch the elusive killer. But Ross was cunning, and he left few clues behind. He evaded capture for years, continuing his reign of terror. The turning point in the case came in 1984 when Ross was finally apprehended by the police. He had been pulled over for a routine traffic violation, and officers discovered incriminating evidence in his car, including restraints and photographs of his victims. With this damning evidence, Ross was arrested and charged with multiple counts of murder. During his trial, Michael Bruce Ross showed no remorse for his heinous crimes. He was cold and emotionless as he recounted the details of each murder. His lack of empathy only served to reinforce the public's perception of him as a true monster. In 1987, Ross was convicted of four counts of murder and sentenced to death. Michael Bruce Ross was born on July 26, 1959, in Putnam, Connecticut, to Patricia and Dan Ross. His early years appeared unremarkable, as he grew up in a middle-class family in Putnam alongside his younger brother. There were no apparent signs of the darkness that would later consume his life. Ross attended Putnam High School, where he was a relatively average student. He showed an interest in science and was known for his quiet and introverted demeanor. After high school, he enrolled at Cornell University, where he pursued a degree in agricultural economics. During his time at Cornell, he seemed like a typical student, focused on his studies and not displaying any outward signs of deviant behavior. However, beneath the surface, a disturbing fascination with violence and death was festering within Ross. He later claimed that these urges began as early as his adolescence, but it wasn't until he reached adulthood that they started to manifest in horrific ways. In 1983, at the age of 24, Ross committed his first known murder when he lured Robin Stavinsky into his car and subsequently raped and strangled her. This brutal act marked the beginning of his reign of terror as the roadside strangler. Ross's victims were primarily young women, many of whom were hitchhikers or prostitutes. His modus operandi involved picking them up, assaulting them, strangling them, and then disposing of their bodies in remote areas. Ross's crimes escalated rapidly. He continued to kill with a chilling regularity, leaving a trail of fear and despair across Connecticut and neighboring states. His ability to blend in with society and his seemingly normal life outside of his heinous acts made him a difficult suspect to apprehend. It wasn't until 1984, following a routine traffic stop, that Ross was finally arrested. Police found disturbing evidence in his vehicle, including restraints and photographs of his victims. With this damning evidence, he was charged with multiple counts of murder and the true extent of his horrifying crimes came to light. During his trial, Ross showed little emotion and no remorse for his actions. He calmly described the details of each murder, leaving the courtroom in a state of shock. In 1987, he was convicted of four counts of murder and sentenced to death. Ross spent nearly two decades on death row, engaging in legal battles and appeals that kept him alive. His case became a focal point in the debate over the death penalty in Connecticut. 
with advocates on both sides passionately arguing their positions. On May 13, 2005, after exhausting his legal options, Michael Bruce Ross was executed by lethal injection, becoming the first person to be executed in Connecticut in over 45 years. His death brought a sense of closure to the families of his victims and the community that had lived in fear of the roadside strangler for years. Some intriguing facts about Michael Bruce Ross. Michael Bruce Ross was notably intelligent and attended Cornell University, a prestigious institution. His academic pursuits in agricultural economics contrasted sharply with his later criminal activities. Ross's killing spree extended over several years, making it difficult for law enforcement to connect the dots between his various crimes. His ability to evade capture for so long added to the mystique surrounding his case. Ross's arrest came about as a result of a routine traffic stop in 1984. It was during this unrelated incident that police discovered incriminating evidence in his car, which eventually led to his arrest and the unraveling of his crimes. One of the most disturbing aspects of Ross's crimes was his habit of taking photographs of his victims before and after their deaths. These photographs served as chilling evidence during his trial. Ross managed to evade capture for years, despite his escalating series of murders. His ability to blend into society and maintain a seemingly normal life outside of his crimes made him a highly elusive serial killer. Ross's crime spanned multiple states, including Connecticut and New York, which complicated the investigation and legal proceedings. This widespread geographical impact contributed to the fear and notoriety surrounding his case. Following his conviction, Ross engaged in a protracted legal battle to avoid execution. He filed numerous appeals, drawing significant attention to his case and sparking debates about the death penalty in Connecticut. Ross was ultimately executed on May 13, 2005 by lethal injection. His execution was highly publicized and marked the first execution in Connecticut in over 45 years, reigniting discussions about the death penalties used in the state. Ross's case, with its disturbing details and his ability to maintain a facade of normalcy, has had a lasting impact on the field of criminal profiling and the study of serial killers. It serves as a haunting reminder of the capacity for evil that can exist within seemingly ordinary individuals. As we conclude our exploration into the life of Michael Bruce Ross, we bid farewell to the chilling depths of this infamous serial killer's psyche.